Now on this Monday, it's a big day for NASA getting ready to launch three new spacecraft that'll map space weather and the sun's influence across our solar system. So this morning, we're learning a little bit more about the mission with Nikki Rail from MASH. She joins us now live from the Kennedy Space Center. Good morning. Big day for Good you guys. Morning. It is a big day. We're really excited. We're hoping to get off the Earth tomorrow. <laughs> yes, okay, let's talk about this mission and what scientists are hoping to learn from it. So we're, we're thrilled that we have three spacecraft. We have the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe Mission, or IMAP. We have the Carruthers Geocorona Observatory, and we also have NOAA's Space Weather Follow-On L1 mission, all helping us to get a better comprehensive picture of what's happening from our local star, the sun, and the energy that's making its way towards Earth and the rest of the universe. Sure, and the idea is to observe space weather. How does that impact us here on Earth? That's a great question. So space weather, it's yes, yes, space has weather. <laughs> There's a constant stream of energy coming out from the sun, and we call that space weather. And, you know, here on Earth, we're quite protected from that energy, but some of our technologies and communications aren't. Things like GPS navigation, some of our satellite radio, and also uh, things like precision agriculture um, rely on, you know, GPS and these really accurate signals. And when we have events where lots of energy is flowing from the sun, that can affect our technologies on Earth. So we need to better understand Understand them so we can prevent those events from impacting us and also protect our power grids and all the things we rely on on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure, we think about that impact, you know, weather has on our cars, our homes, mm -hmm. our yards or whatever. Um, what would happen if the spacecrafts get hit by this weather? It, it, can it impact the mission? So we build our spacecraft to be really resistant and protected from space weather. We want to be right in the middle of it. We want space weather to impact our spacecraft so we can measure it, so we can understand it and use that information to help protect astronauts and, and spacecraft technologies as we go back to the moon and on to Mars. Sure. Uh, you talked about the information, the crucial information. So the satellites are headed into orbit about mm, a, a million miles from Earth. How long does it take to get to their, you know, intended spot and then how long before we get some information back? So it's, we call it a cruise phase. It's the time just like when you're going on a road trip, how long it takes to get there. We're cruising out to this L1 uh, or a million miles from Earth spot. It takes about 108 days to get there. And by the time we get there with most of the spacecraft, we're going to be commissioned and able to start entering into our prime science and, and starting to collect data immediately. Mm -hmm. So after that 108 day period, it's go time and we start collecting our data. Well, it's almost go time for you guys. Uh, Nikki, good luck. Thank you so much. We appreciate the time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.